Hey, good morning, everyone. Marty Missouri here. It's Wednesday, the 2nd of August, 2023, with your midweek market snapshot. A couple things I want to share with you today before we jump into the technicals that have to do with the macro environment. We continue to feel not so great about overall general conditions. Our concerns, we think, should be consensus but clearly they're not. Listening to Bloomberg this morning, two analysts on one was an academic, the other one was with Invesco funds, and both were very uh, sanguine, if not optimistic, about prospects for the next several months anyway, for the economy, for the markets, and so on. And I'm not saying that they don't make somewhat compelling cases. I mean, they're based in fact, in terms of the data they're selecting to look at. But I think somewhat remiss in not really looking at the overall picture and suggesting what some of these things that might have a favorable look or skew to them in their view might actually portend in the grander scheme of things if indeed they were to play out. And that's speaking toward the notion that you know, things are fine, that there's no recession in the offing, that the labor market is strong, therefore the consumer will keep on spending. And without looking at the reality of what that means from an inflationary perspective, but the implication there, if not the outright statement, is that inflation is going to come down. There really aren't any structural forces vastly different than the last 40 years, and we're going to settle right back in to a low inflation, good positive growth scenario. Well, that's just not what we're seeing. If anything, uh, at best, we're seeing a stagflationary environment where you have a stagnant economy with higher than perhaps previously palatable inflation. Um, but we still think that odds favor a recession in the not too distant future. So a couple of cases in point with regard to that, and then the technicals. So the first one being yesterday's release of the quarterly Fed's senior loan officer survey. And what we're tracking here are tightening standards. Are they rising or falling? And what percentage of banks are tightening their standards on mid and large size companies? So commercial and industrial loans and small size companies. And what is the overall demand for commercial and industrial loans according to those surveys? So again, just updated this week, and you can see it's continuing to move in what is clearly the wrong direction. And just look at the level throughout the past 30 years or so that the survey has been around, and you can see this is a level that we have not seen save for periods where we're rising into recession, there's the tech bubble, or you know, in recession, there's the great financial crisis. And here we are apparently on the other end of the COVID recession, so rising into it. Demand a little less bad. Of course, negative 50 is very, very low in terms of demand for commercial industrial loans. Also on the consumer side, banks are tightening standards there for all categories. And you know, with regard to what had been a real source of sanguineness for the economy, which had been a massive amount of excess savings in the bank accounts of consumers relative to pre-COVID because of all the money that was, that was passed out, that is burning up. I've shown charts that estimate as early as next month, running out of those excess savings some you know, into the beginning of next year. Apparently, the bottom 40% in terms of income earners have less money now in their bank accounts than they did pre-COVID. So, you know, th just the kind of underpinnings for consumption seem to be waning, and I just shared loan demand, according to senior loan officers, uh, is waning a bit, certainly in the commercial and industrial space and standards are tightening as well. So again, not a good setup there. And then another one I thought was interesting, we track federal tax receipts as part of our long-term analysis, and they are rolling over. So Tavi Costi here points to state and local tax receipts just experienced the worst decline 
in revenues ever recorded. Second steepest decline in year-over-year -year percentage in history with only the great financial crisis 2008 having been worse. Federal tax receipts are also dropping 10% on a year-over-year -year basis. Clear indication of continued fundamental deterioration of the economy, which sharply contrasts with overall financial assets that remain excessively or at excessively inflated valuations. Of course, it depends on where you look, but yes, we are seeing excessive valuations, particularly in places that have gotten all the oomph so far in 2023. A counter to that this morning was ADP jobs report. The private sector payrolls came in at like 320,000. It was estimated that they would come in at 190. Last month did the same thing. Market sold off on it. It was like 500,000 last month because it anticipated that something that's that huge is going to show up in the BLS number, the number everybody tracks on Friday. And it didn't. It came in at like 209 and the markets calmed down. The reason big job prints would be a concern for the market is because of the reaction on behalf of the Fed, because of course a tight labor market means higher you know, employment costs, therefore inflation that doesn't come down nearly to their target in any sustainable fashion. And we don't think that's doable anyway. Uh, as you probably have heard, Fitch Rating Services downgraded the U.S. to AA plus yesterday. So it's kind of a shrug of the shoulders is what I did. I did see the market react to it. Part of the problem is that another statistic this morning weighs heavily along with the downgrade, and that is that the Treasury just updated their need for borrowing or the projected need for bond issuance for the third quarter by another like $260 billion to a $1 trillion in the third quarter alone. So demand for that better be high, right? Going to a AA plus probably doesn't do anything other than maybe throw out a question mark. The reason cited, you know, the, the massive deficit makes some sense. Uh, they also cited the political battles that go on with debt ceilings. Well, those are just political battles. I read Peter Bookvar's commentary on it. He kind of poo-poos that. I think I do as well. That's always going to be the case going forward. In fact, I would argue that the last little battle they had ended without much of a bang at all. I didn't think the politicians pushed it nearly as far as they could have. So we'll see. I believe October is when we're going to cross that bridge once again, and people are getting a little nervous about that as well. So anyway, interesting dynamics out there. Plenty to be concerned about with stocks at these levels. And let me just illustrate that for you here on the charts. Here's the hourly chart of the S&P 500. So 60 minutes is each candle. This, is, this chart is 60 days long. And you can see this morning we had a pretty good gap lower. But this was, you know, more or less foretold by the technicals. We had, you know, this consolidation in here since mid-July. Really haven't gone anywhere, um, you know, in the last couple of weeks or so. And then um, hugely bearish divergences on the momentum indicators. So this was strong technical evidence that this would break out below. And, you know, we're still in that range, so it hasn't happened yet. So we'll see. On the one-year daily chart, um, we are breaking below this rising wedge pattern. We did have very long extended bearish divergences. That's not a good sign when you, when you test these historically. And we do have a sell signal here on the MACD. So breaking below this, the bottom of this, this pattern here is a sell signal when you have it against bearish divergences and a sell signal here. We've got Apple and Amazon earnings tomorrow. That could definitely save this, uh, this breakdown and this sell signal right here could be a whipsaw. We have the jobs number on Friday. Of course, that could be something that the market likes. It would like a low jobs number, by the way. Uh, coming off of very overbought territory and a bearish divergence. So not a good setup for the broader market right here, particularly against those macro factors that I just showed you. And then uh, NASDAQ 100 index, I think this is the one that really counts right here because of this concentration that we've seen. 
you know, similar look here, call it a consolidation and a pretty good size gap lower. As I speak right now, the NASDAQ 100 is down 1.4%. It was just looking really, really poor here on the short term chart. On the daily, we have broken down as of this morning, broken out of this kind of consolidation, really a rising wedge pattern. Uh, I told you this one looks more concerning to me. It looks very much like it did at the all time peak coming off of these overbought levels. And so again, this is not a good look against a very, very heavy market. The big dogs, Amazon and Apple after the bell tomorrow. Here's the Amazon daily chart. Uh, you can see we, we've tracked this one for a while. Um, when we've had falling wedge patterns and, and bullish divergences, we've gotten nice rallies out of that. When we've had a toppy pattern against bearish divergences, we've gotten big declines off of that. So uh, you can see the technicals, the way we look at them have been pretty telling for Amazon. Of course, earnings, could we could get anything and it could be quite dramatic in either direction. The technicals would say here that the market is set up for Amazon to give back a good chunk of these impressive gains of late. That's what the technicals say. Earnings could, could tell a different story and these technicals could fail very easily. But right now, this is a very heavy, not good looking setup for Amazon. So we'll see how it plays out tomorrow. Virtually the same thing with regard to Apple. So Apple, biggest company in the world. Apple just gets indiscriminate buying. Anytime anybody buys a growth index fund or any index fund that's got U.S. equities almost for that matter, probably not a value fund, but certainly the S&P, certainly all the growth averages and so forth. Uh, you know, here's your longer term chart or you know, two year chart actually of Apple. You know, here we were a little uptrend with massive bearish divergences corrected off of that. Um, came off of that nothing diverging there just a good solid rally but then we moved into this pattern momentum's rolling over right on that second peak sure enough corrective action uh, in here at least on the RSI we had a bullish look relative to the decline got a really nice multiple day pop only to roll over pretty hard here we are bottoming again so folks you can see that these technical patterns are definitely to be respected so now we have a long channel here, upward channel that uh, Apple's been bouncing between against long bearish divergence during that same time period in the MACD, overbought notably here on the RSI. Sell signal here, tomorrow's gonna be big. If Apple breaks through here, and technically it looks like odds favor that a bit, then this market can get really, really ugly in a hurry. So folks, what we're doing here, this is really directed at you clients. Uh, we actually had a pretty good year so far. We're not complaining at all, certainly relative to our expectations coming into the year and relative to the risks out there. We just rolled our hedges out a couple more weeks. We, we feel good about paying for put protection here against the S&P 500 or against a big fall in the S&P. Um, in terms of the weak economy, uh, to the extent that that does impact treasuries and interest rates, that's very bullish for our not small gold position. Uh, however, this treasury issuance here uh, creates somewhat of a tailwind for yields because you know there's, there's a big supply coming and if the demand isn't there, then the price of that supply is going to have to be bid up and that's the interest rate. And that has real macro you know, asset price implications for lots of things. And it could be bullish the dollar which would be very bearish for asset prices, stocks as well. But then you've got the weakening macro backdrop against that. All this is yet to play out. We do not know what the future holds, but we do know what the risk reward setup is. And right now it's enough to warrant something other than, you know, backing up the truck, as I put it in yesterday's blog post. Folks, I'll leave it there. Thank you, as always, for watching and listening. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.